It's good to be in the house of the Lord. If you got your Bibles, let's look at Hebrews chapter 13 tonight. Is where we're going to be in the reading of God's Word. We hope that we can share something with you that will help you tonight. Now we're in the house of the Lord tonight. Don't get quiet on me. We had such a good service this morning. I hope you didn't shout yourself out. <laughs> Are you ready for the Word of God? Yes, amen. amen. Let's stand tonight for the reading of God's Word. I'm going to give you a Bible workout tonight. Before we read Hebrews chapter 13, let's look at Genesis chapter 28. Let's go to that one first. Genesis chapter 28. Anybody was wondering, that's the first book in the Bible. Genesis chapter 28, verse 15. I love to hear rustling of pages. The Bible says, and behold, I am with thee and will keep thee in all places, whether thou goest. And will bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken of thee of. I'm glad he won't leave us, amen. Amen. He's speaking to Jacob here in a vision. And I loved it so good, I marked it in my Bible and highlighted it. And I think it's worth reading again. And behold, I am with thee and will keep thee in all the places whether thou goest, and will bring thee again into the land, for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. Now let's look at Hebrews chapter 13 in verse 5. The Bible says, Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come to you right now, Lord, for a few moments, will you speak to us out of your word, Lord, and give us what we need tonight that we may be fed and can grow from what you're about to show us. Lord, uh, you're the one that writes the message. I'm only the messenger, Lord. Speak through these stammering lips that your word go out and penetrate tonight the heart of your people. We'll love you and praise you for it all. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Here we see in this chapter, Paul's writing to the Hebrews to encourage them and to exhort them to various duties in this chapter. It's an encouragement to the church today. I'm only reading these two verses because I want you to try to understand something as I preach this message that the Lord give me entitled, Never Forsaken. I don't know where you're at in your life, but there have been times in my life I've wondered where the Lord was at. Maybe you have never felt that way, but I have felt that way. God has got quiet on me at times, and I've wondered, Lord, where are you at in what I'm going through? I really, really need your help right now. And I'm glad that even in those times when we feel like that we've been forsaken and maybe the Lord's not listening, I'm telling you right now, He's closer than He's ever been when He gets quiet on you. I can look back at those times when I've been through those times and wondered where God was at. And after it's all said and done, I can look back and see where God has carried me through that situation. I may not like it at the time and don't see any good in it, but if you'll be faithful and trust God, I promise you somewhere down the way, you'll look back and see the perfect will of God working in your life. Our problem is, is we want to live in the now and doubt now and say, God, where are you at now? But I want to tell you, number one, that God loves you tonight. He has not left you. He loves you tonight. Now, God's been dealing with me with this message, and I know it's for somebody. It may be just for me tonight, but I want to give you what God's put up on our heart. He loves you tonight. And I'm going to tell you over in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, the Bible says, But God commendeth His love toward us, and while that we were yet sinners, 
Christ died for us. That's a love that it's hard to understand the love of God. Even now as a child of God, I don't understand God's love a lot of times. I don't understand how He can love people that will curse His name. How He can love people that will kill other people. I don't know how He loves people that that rape women and kill children and do all these evil things. But He said it's not His will that any should perish, but that all should come under repentance. He died for the murderer, the rapist, and all these like that, just like He died for you and me. I'm telling you tonight, God loves His people. And we are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Even those that are lost without God, they are His people. They are His creation. They just don't know it yet. Guess how they'll know it? They'll know it through you and I. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. How can He be lifted up? Through you and I. Can I hear from you tonight? It'll be through you and I as we lift the Lord up. We'll help draw people to Him. As we have lifted people up, lifted the Lord up, loved on people and tried to help people, God is drawing people into our ministry. It's not us. It's not what we're doing. It's just we're following the will of God. We are lifting Him up. And by lifting Him up, we see God's love working through us on people's lives. It don't cost a thing to be good to people. It don't cost a thing to be good to people, I said. It don't cost a thing to to smile every now and again. (laughs) Show God's love, amen, every now and again. But our problem is it's easier to frown than it is to smile. Do you all know it takes more muscles in your face to smile than it does to frown? But sometimes you ought to look in the mirror and notify your face about all the frowning you're doing. Amen? Because we're supposed to be showing the love of God. We are His workmanship. We are His mouthpiece. We are His mirror. When people look at you, they're looking at Christ. It's awful quiet in here tonight. I'm telling you, I'm glad He's never forsook me, not one time in my life. Over in 1 John chapter 4 verse 10, the Bible says, "Here Here is love. Not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the perpetuation for our sin. The atonement, the sacrifice, the one that could, only one that could pay the price, the perpetuation for our sin. That's how much God loved you. That He'd give His Son on a rugged cross for you and I when we're not worthy of it. Amen? We're not worthy of it tonight, but I'm glad that God loves you tonight. You may not feel loved, but I'm telling you what, there's one that loves you more than anybody else. I know my mother loves me. I know my daddy loved me. I know my family loves I know my wife and daughter love me. But they don't love me like God loves me. They can't do for me what God does for me. When I feel down and out and depressed and all alone, I'm glad I can go into my secret place. I can go into my closet and I begin to talk to the Lord. He begins to reveal His love to me all there by myself. God shows His self to me and shows me how much He loves me. The devil will say when we go through these things, Brother Bo, where's God at in this? God loved you so much you wouldn't be going through this. He's always there to put doubt in your mind. And to tell you that God doesn't love you. But I'm telling you tonight, God loves you. John chapter 15 verse 13, the Bible says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man would lay down his life for his friends. And ye are his friends if you do whatsoever he commands you. We're to worship him tonight and recognize him for who he is. He's a God of love. He's not left you. He's not forsook you. You're not by yourself. Maybe there's times you feel like, where's God at in all of this? But I'm telling you, friends, hold on. God's fixing to show you His love. Maybe you've had family walk out on you, friends walk out on you, churches turn against you, preachers uh, turn against you, walk out on you. But I'm telling you tonight, God loves you unconditionally. He's not went nowhere. If you feel like, where's God at? If you look around most of the time, we're the ones that have walked off, not God. 
And as I talked and preached this morning and told you that how God is with us, and I use the illustration of our brother, He's with you everywhere you go. He's with you. He don't leave you. When I'm at work, He's with me. When I'm at school, you children, He's with you. When you're down to the restaurant eating, He's with you. When you're at a house alone, He's with you. When you're in a place where you think that nobody sees, He's right there too. He sees and knows everything that goes on in our life. And He loves us. I'm glad that we are, we are His children and we're His workmanship. And when we commit sin and we do wrong, guess who knows first? It ain't me. It's the Lord. And He loves you so much that He'll let you know immediately. He sends that Holy Spirit. Hey, you're not right. You're not doing that right. You need to come unto me. And you repent right then and get forgiveness of your sins. He says, not let the sun go down upon your wrath, but to pray and ask for forgiveness and God will cleanse you from that sin and you can realize that God loves you. He's not forsook you. He's not went nowhere. God is right there. Number two, God is with you. He ain't went nowhere. He's right there with you, no matter what. Look at Psalms 91. Write this down. Verse 15. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him. I will deliver him out of all of his trouble because he's with you. He'll deliver you out of that mess you're in if you'll trust him. But a lot of times we'll trust the devil more than we'll trust God. That's awful weak tonight. That's the truth tonight, church. We'll listen more, listen more to the devil than we will to God most of the time. He, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You, he is with you. No matter what goes on in your life, he's not forsook you. This day of time, uh, as the Lord began to reveal this message to me and talk about this message to me and show me what it means, He said, my people feel like that I'm not there and they have nobody to turn to, but I'm telling you what, the Lord is with you. He's not went nowhere. He loves you. He's with you. It's not about uh, uh, being at a, uh, having your name on a church row, uh, holding a position in a church, being thunk well of and people patting you on the back. I'll tell you what I'd be worried about. I'd be worried about what God thought about me. I'd be wondering where I walked with God at. I'd be wondering how my relationship is with the Lord. He, You know, my daughter, I want to be with my daughter. I want to be around my daughter. I want to be whatever she's doing and where she's at. I want to be right there because I love her. I want to be a part of her life. And you are the same way with your children. God is no different. He's with you and wants to be part of your life. Our problem is, is we don't want Him. You think about our school systems, the shape that we're in, and how we've uh, let all these things come to pass over the years. I've wondered how it's taken place. Nobody asked me about it. Nobody asked me if I wanted to take prayer out of school. The next thing I know, prayer was out of school. Nobody asked me if it was all right to pass this law or that law. We're in this land and we have to go by these laws. But I'll tell you one thing, when it goes against God's holy word, I'm going to stand up against it. I'm going to pray in the school. I'm going to pray and stand for the Lord. I'm going to do what's right because I'm commanded of God. Why? Because He's with me. He, I like to tell people like this. He, he won't put no more up on me than He can bear. Not that I can bear, that He can bear. And if you think about that right there, there's a whole lot that you could handle. Amen? There's times we feel like we're about to pull in two. And we'll say, where's God and all that? I, I can get in that quiet place and I begin to talk to the Lord. And as soon as I say, Lord, I know He's right there. I told uh, Ravonda today, I'm glad that God set this thing up that we've got to walk by faith and not by sight. In the Old Testament, we see where God spoke to men of old and the people of old, and, and He uh, spoke to them through burning bushes and, and through mules and everything else, and they heard audible things. But as as it come down through time and Christ died on the cross, now we're under the grace covenant of God. We walk by faith and not by sight. I'm glad it's that way. Because I know He's with me. Sometimes you just have to trust by faith when it don't even make no sense. 
I don't know how I'm going to get out of this mess. I don't know how it's going to work out, but God's going to do it. I'm just going to have the faith, Lord, to trust you. I know you're with me. I know you love me. I'm just going to put it on you, Lord. I don't know how else to do it, but I'm going to trust you. Anybody ever done that? Anybody ever walked by faith lately? Come on, help me now tonight. Anybody walked by faith lately? Or are you walking by sight? Well, if I'd see the Lord do something, I'd do something. I heard this story one time about a man that was an atheist and he didn't believe in God and, and he, he talked to many preachers and different people about God being real. How can you prove God's real? Nobody can really explain to him how real God was. He was struggling himself wanting to find out who the true maker of this world was. And he was sitting in his home and he said, "If Lord, if you're real, make some move in this room. And about that time a fly landed on him. Now you could say, well, that's a coincidence. I'm glad God can work through a fly. Well, I'd ask God to make the lamp fly or something, mother. But he said, Lord, let something move. God's going to get his point across. He's done working miracles. He's done doing all these things that we can see by our eyes to prove that he's God. He ain't got nothing to prove. I'm telling you tonight, he has nothing to prove. Don't challenge God that way. Well, Lord, if you'll do this, then I'll do that. When He sent His Son to Calvary to die on the cross, He's done all He's going to do. You'll come by faith now. Can I hear from you tonight? You'll come by faith in no other way. He said, come unto me, all you that are labor and heavy laden, and I'll give you what? Rest. The devil is a troubler. He will trouble your mind. He will try to take your joy from you. He'll tell you that God don't love you. God's not with you. He's a liar and the father of it. You've got to overcome that and trust the Lord. Matthew 28, verse 20. The Bible says, Teach them to observe all things whatsoever I command you. I am with you always, even down to the end of the world. Here we see him talking to the disciples at the Great Commission. He's talking about going out and teaching people. Tell them how real he is. Tell them I'm coming again. Tell them I'm with them. Tell them I love them. Tell everybody you can tell. Tell them your experience. Tonight, I can't, I can't tell you how I feel in my heart. I can't tell you the joy that I can speak it and try to show you. But you'll never know the joy that is in my heart until you come for yourself. This walk with Christ is between you and Him. Not you, me, and Him, but you and Him. One day you'll stand before a holy God and you'll give an account for you. You'll never give an account for anything I've ever said or done, but you sure will account for what you've said or done. And that turns right around to me. A lot of times people are pointing at people and yelling at them, tell them what they need to do, but what you don't realize, I may point one finger at you, but there's three more pointing right back at me. I have to realize that God loves me and that God is with me. And He's not going to allow anything to happen without it being His perfect will in my life. I thought about, as they talked about these children, children missing, children having... heart transplant, children's got eye cancer, going through all these different things. Why is this all happening? Why does good things happen to bad people? Lord, why are you letting this happen? It's for His perfect will. God has a reason for all things. I'm telling you tonight, God has a reason. If you're in a turmoil right now and you've been going through uh, the torments of this life and everything's been piling in on you, I think I'd be doing an inventory of what's going on in my life and my walk with Christ and see what's going on that's hindering me this way. But you know what? Do like Job did, pull himself up. And he said, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That would be an awful place to be if you thought about what Job went through. I don't know of anybody in here that's had to walk the life of Job. Heaven forbid that any of you would or myself. But I wonder where we could see God in all that. God even works through suffering. Sometimes we'll be put places that we don't want to be so we can represent God the best. You ever thought about when your children get sick? 
your prayer life sure gets better, don't it? Before that, it wasn't too good, but let them get real sick. And boy, your prayer life will get real good real quick. You'll really start walking by faith because you'll realize there ain't nothing I can do but trust God. I know I've been there. And it'd be that time when I'm completely helpless. No way I can do anything. And I'd say, Lord, I'm just going to trust You. I still trust You, Lord. I'm going to give her to You. You take care of her, Lord. Heal her body. Do what you got to do. And the prayers of a righteous man, the Bible said, availeth much. Wouldn't you want to walk with God and stay real close to Him so that your prayers would be answered pretty quick? I'm glad God works that way tonight. So not only does God love you and He's with you, He'll never, never, ever leave you. Anybody ever told you that the Lord will leave you? Boy, I've been told that. Better watch what you're doing. The Lord will leave. He'll leave you, leave you in the dust. You better watch what you're doing. God don't work that way. I'm telling you tonight. God loves us unconditionally. He'll never leave you or forsake you. No matter what you've done. Can I explain that statement? I believe those that are truly born again, saved under the grace of God, will walk with God and live for God and, and be what they need for God. If you go out and live like a hellion six days a week, try to come in here on Sunday and shout the glory, I doubt you ever been born again. I make that statement tonight and I stand on it. Those that can live in sin and have no remorse, have no conviction, have no chastisement that they're living in sin, they ain't never been born again. That's awful harsh tonight. It's the Word of God. Those that have truly been born again, when I get out of, out of the way and I start committing sin or I've done something wrong, I'm the first to know it. And He that lives within me, which is the Holy Spirit of God, convicts my life. And the first thing I want to do is make things right. Now what happens to a lot of people that can live in sin or living in sin? They've never been taught the truth. A lot of these people don't know. They've been told they can, once they get saved, they can go out and do anything they want to do, live like a devil, drink it up, party, do whatever you want. You'll be all right. Heaven's your home. I'm going to tell you what, that's the awfulest life I've ever heard of in my life. The Holy Spirit that lives inside of me will pull out that big rod of correction and wire me out for that. And will not let me have no peace. Can I hear from you tonight? I've always had a problem, those that could live like a devil and, and claim to be born again. I've never believed it. I never will believe it. Why? Because God won't let me buy with it. <laughs> if He won't let me buy with it, He sure ain't going to let you buy with it. And I believe those that have truly been saved will walk with God. Why? Because He will never leave you. I think about some of the failures that I've had, brother. How I failed God. And how I must have broke the heart of God. Maybe those places where you've been, you thought... Ain't nobody will see me over here. I'll do this over here and the Lord, nobody will know. Maybe you cheated on something here or done something there. Cheated on your taxes or stole something from somebody. Took something you weren't supposed to. I want nobody know. Nobody's looking. I promise you, the Lord's looking. He knows all about it. It's getting awful quiet in here tonight. I'm telling you how the devil works. Now, let's say you have done that. Let's say I've done it. And I know I'm guilty. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, what I do now? I'm guilty. I've done it. What I do now? I'm glad that He goes with me all the way. And that Holy Spirit is working with my heart, saying, come unto me. My little children, I write unto thee that if thou sin, have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ the righteous who is faithful and just to forgive you your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Why? Because I'll never leave you. I'll be with you always. So you know what I do? I go and get down on my knees, make an altar wherever I'm at, whether it's in the truck, on the job, at the church, at the workplace, whatever it is, I go right then to the throne and say, Lord, please forgive me. And you know what He does? He don't look at me and say, well, I'll think about it. You know, you've done quite a bit. 
You ain't followed me very good. I'm going to put you on a hold period and I'll think about forgiving you. I'm glad I don't serve a God like that. Immediately God will forgive me of that and set my record straight and I need to walk straight after that. Remember when you was a child? Well, I'll tell some of you and you'll remember this. Remember when you was a child and you get out of line your mother go make you break a switch for her? And she said, you better break one that I can use. She'd make me go break one for my brother and I'd go get one about as big as a broomstick. <laughs> you know what happened? I'd get it first for breaking the broomstick. She said, now go get me one that I can use. And I'd be so crazy, I'd go out in the woods and get it. Pull my britches up and start strapping my legs going, that ain't too bad, I'll take her that one. Now that's how we think when we're children. And I still get it. Even if I broke one for my brother, I still get it. Because it never was the right way. She always felt like I needed it too, no matter what. But I get out of line, she says, you're going to get it. You're going to get it. Now get that warning. You're going to get it. Why is it with kids when you tell them, don't do it? Don't touch it. Don't touch it. They're looking at you the whole time. You better not. (laughs) We do God the same way. God's saying, don't do it. Don't do it. Nobody's looking. Don't do it. And sure enough, we do it. And we fall. And that chastisement comes. And we feel lower than a snake's belly. We'll come in here. Everybody's shouting and praising God. And you're sitting back there, and it's like, whoa, what is wrong? You know what's wrong? There's sin in your life. That's what's wrong. And that heavenly Father that will never leave you or forsake you is wearing you out saying, you need to make things right with me. Before you can shout, before you can worship, you've got sin in your life. And He tells us that He loves us. He'll never leave us. In Deuteronomy 31, the Bible says in verse 6, I love this. He says, Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, He it is that is with thee, with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. No matter what you've done, come unto me. I'll forgive you. I'll make everything right. But the devil will tell you, you've done too much. You have went too far. Am I not right tonight? They know you used to go down at that church. You know where you've been. You know what you've done. I just stayed the house. People are going to know what you've done. They're going to see it on you. The devil, he'll tell you all these things and you'll agree with him. And the next thing you know, you're sitting at the house. Maybe your companion went and she comes home or he comes home and says, boy, you should have been in service tonight. It was good. And you know in your heart you should have been there, but you let sin separate you from worship. But God's been with you the whole time. Even at home, He's nudging on your heart going, you need to come. You need to go. I want to bless you. I want to feed you. But you can't be fed sitting at the house watching Andy grip it. We've got folks that we've been counseling, working with, and they said, you know what? We're just going to stay home. We'll, we'll listen to TV preachers. And we'll, we'll have our church that way. And I'm not against some TV preachers. There's some good ones on there. There's a lot of bad ones, there's, but there's a lot of good ones. And I'm not against that. But I got to go over there to Hebrews, where he said to fail not to assemble yourselves together. Am I not right? Amen. We're to come together. And by coming together, we grow strong together. We get to hear Sister Frida testify. You know, we get to hear Brother Randy pray. And some of you others that do things in here, we get to experience that. And by watching you guys do that and be obedient to God, we realize that the Lord's never left us. He's right there with us and helping us, encouraging us. And we get stronger by being in the house of the Lord. But the devil wants you to stay in the house. Eh, you go next week. Eh, it's a go next time. Don't worry about it. Stay home. Well, I didn't feel good enough to come tonight. I could have stayed home. 
Y'all felt funny if the pastor stayed home to watch Andy Griffith, wasn't you? Where's the pastor at? He's at the house. That's the way we do a lot of times. But he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He loves you unconditionally tonight. Tonight the Lord wanted me to just kind of get down to business with you all. Kind of pull it back just a little bit and tell you the devil's a liar and the father of it. And as long as you listen to him, you'll be robbed your whole life. But if you'll step out of your comfort zone and step into faith and say, you know what? I'm going to go down there and I'm going to let them people love on me. I'm going to be part of that. And I'm going to worship and I'm going to be happy no matter what the devil says. And how much he lies to me, I'm going to get in there and I'm going to get busy for God. Yes, it'll make the devil mad, but it'll also put him on the run. And you'll see things start happening in your life. You'll see God start turning things around in your life. You know, we've been here about two and a half, almost three years now, and I've watched people in this church grow from the time I've met them to now. You're not the same person you was two and a half years ago. Why? Because you stepped out of your comfort zone and said, you know what? I want what God's got going on down there. I want to be a part of that. I know that the Lord loves me. I know that He's with me. I know He won't forsake me. I'm going to go in the name of the Lord even though the devil don't want me to go. I'm going anyhow. And when you do that, you're blessed for it. Amen? God loves you tonight. And I don't know who you are in this building tonight. I don't know anybody's heart. Only God knows. But maybe you've thought about that lately. You've thought, where is the Lord in all this? You've been suffering depression, anxiety, fear. Now you're, you're dealing with doubt. Even wonder where God's at in all that. I'm going to tell you, He's right where He's always been. He's never left you one time. Let us stand with our heads bowed and our eyes closed.